Jeff, great to have you with us this morning. What do you think is enterprise spending the next shoe to drop? Well, Deirdre, we haven't seen that yet. Um, we've seen no slowdown in enterprise software spending. And in fact, if you read some of the recent reports that have come out, surveys of CIOs, CTOs, Gartner just came out with their forecast. Uh, enterprise spending in 2020 was roughly 400 billion. They're forecasting 600 billion for 2023. As you know, the, these shifts to the cloud are long multi-year projects, often involving systems integrators like Accenture, or Deloitte. And so we, we, we think it bodes well over the next few years, but certainly you know, to, to the conversation you just had with Sarah, smart CEOs and smart founders are making sure that their businesses are well run, checking in on their underlying metrics and the, and the efficiency of their business, because that is how the public market is now valuing these software companies. We're seeing a much bigger focus on a multiple of free cash flow than we were 12 months ago. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, Sarah Fry was optimistic. We also spoke to Sundar Pichai of Alphabet last week, who says that his investment plans are still on track. But there is sort of this separation now between companies that can continue to do that because they have the cash and those that cannot. Uber is an example of one that says that they're going to scale back, Robinhood as well, some of the others. So is this still going to play out? Could that weigh on earnings for the rest of the year? I know this shift is secular, but in the shorter term, I think there was this belief that, as you said, cloud spending, enterprise spending was going to be kept intact. Maybe that softens? I think it's somewhat sector dependent. I mean, Uber obviously is heavily, heavily reliant on consumer spending and in some ways travel and return to work in major metro markets. You know, we see pockets of, of real optimism. Uh, you guys know we're big fans of SMBs and SMB tech, so companies that sell technology to small businesses in America. And we're starting to see a big rebound there. We forecasted that we would coming out of COVID. We're now seeing metrics for small business in America to be strong. And again, small businesses 40% of US GDP, 60% of Americans work for a small business. We're seeing, I'm on the board of a company called Homebase, uh, and we're seeing hours worked up 2% month over month and up 7% in hospitality. So hours work being a metric that says, what is the health of these businesses? How likely are they to be able to attract the labor that they need to operate their business? And in particular, seeing it in hospitality is great because the hotel industry has had a very hard time with labor over the last few years. Yeah, Jeff, uh, I was just talking to the CEO of Toast, on Friday, kind of fitting into that small business narrative. But part of what I'm wondering is whether it's enterprise spending, small business spending, which spending is going to continue, right? What problems does the technology have to solve, especially in an inflationary environment? And how good does the model have to be in order for some of these either, uh, you know, startups or newly public companies to get the capital that they need to grow if they're not profitable? It's a great question, John. I, I guess a couple of things I would highlight. One, when you think about the technology that these SMB tech companies, you mentioned Toast, but also companies like Ring Central, Square, on the private side, uh, Electric, Brightwheel, et cetera, they're deflationary, right? They're helping these companies, they're helping business owners run their business more effectively, lowering their cost to capital, lowering their cost to, to process payments on, on behalf of their customers, lowering their supply chain costs. So we see that trend of SMB tech as deflationary for these businesses. But as you highlight, if we head into a, a recessionary environment, budgets always get scaled back. It takes longer for companies to buy technology. I think it's a little bit hard to forecast right now. Right now, we're still seeing low unemployment, good growth, as I mentioned, in earnings, as you guys have, have covered. You know, Q1 earnings for most tech companies were strong. We haven't yet seen that impact on the actual performance of the businesses. The biggest thing that we've been trying to do is roll up our sleeves, dig in over the last few months, spend time with our founders and CEOs, and make sure that they're, as you mentioned, well capitalized and have the right uh, underlying fundamentals in their business so they can ride out a storm if we have one. Fortunately, for those of us who were here uh, in 2000 and also 08, 09, we know how painful that cycle can be. And so trying to leverage that experience mm. and pass that wisdom along so the folks can make sure they can navigate some choppy waters.